Stars are born and stars die, just like people. I'm not going to talk about the birth of stars. It's a topic all by itself, and we do not understand the birth of stars anywhere nearly as well as we understand the death of stars. A star is born when nuclear fusion ignites and produces heat. The star is formed first because of matter that falls in gravitationally. Matter attracts each other. More and more falls in and falls in. The temperature goes up in the center. And if it is high enough, tens of millions of degrees, then nuclear fusion produces energy and the star is born. Our sun was born about five billion years ago. But the nuclear fusion doesn't last forever. The nuclear fusion produces heat, an enormous amount of heat. Our sun, the energy from our sun, most people say that's clean energy, solar energy. Yeah, it's nuclear energy, believe me. It's nuclear fusion. Hydrogen burns to helium, nuclear fusion. Our sun, when it will have used up its hydrogen, which becomes helium, then the helium will ignite nuclear fusion and becomes carbon. Then ultimately, when the carbon has been used up, the star will no longer be hot enough inside to ignite. The nuclear fusion will stop, and gravity, it's the only thing that is left, will squeeze the star, squeeze the star, squeeze the star, squeeze the core, and what is left over is an object that has the size of about the size of the Earth, but it has about the same mass as our Sun. That means the density of that object, which is called a white dwarf, is about a million grams per cubic centimeter, a million times denser than water. Unimaginable. When they were first suggested that they might exist, people thought, astronomers thought people were crazy. They never believed it, but they were discovered in 1862. If the star, so our sun becomes a white dwarf, in five billion years. The sun has five billion years to go. Already five billion years old, has another five billion years to go. If the star that is born is way more massive than our sun, there are stars that are 10, 20, even 60, 100 times more massive than the sun. If it is more than eight times the mass of the sun, then the implosion the infall due to gravity when the nuclear fusion has been used up is way stronger that the white dwarf will be squeezed even smaller and is no longer the size of the Earth, which is about 10,000 kilometers, but becomes only 10 kilometers, which is a neutron star. If this small star is thousand times smaller than a white dwarf, then the volume is a billion times smaller. Thousand to the power three is a billion. That means the density is not a million times larger than water, but is 10 to the 15 times larger than water, a one with 15 zeros. And it has a size of 10 kilometers. Now, if the star that was born is more than 25 times the sun, then even the neutron star is not stable and will be squeezed to a point, because of gravity, that has zero size. Think about it. A point that has no size, but it does have easily 10 
20 times the mass of our sun. But the size is zero, so the density is infinitely high. We cannot imagine it. We cannot do any physics on it because there is no quantum gravity theory. That's what we call a black hole. If you are near the black hole, in the vicinity of the black hole, you cannot escape anymore because the speed that you need to escape becomes larger than the speed of light, so you are prisoner forever, while you will ultimately fall towards the center, where is that point, and then that's of course the end of you. But outside that point is an imaginary sphere, which we call the event horizon, which is way larger than a point, and if you're inside that horizon, you can never get out. So the death of stars could mean a white dwarf, a neutron star, or something as bizarre as a black hole with a density which is infinitely high. If that's not crazy, nothing is. Before the sun has used up its nuclear energy, nuclear fuel, um, the heat production, the, the, the nuclear fusion, the heat production, increases enormously, increases so much that our sun will become about 100 times larger than it is now, and it will become very cool. The outside of the sun will become very cool. Uh, we call that a, a giant star. So imagine the sun is now half a degree in the sky. If it becomes 100 times larger, then seen from my chair here would be this big. It would melt Mercury, Venus, and the Earth would all disappear. That happens in five billion years. Before this collapse, in the core happens, it first becomes enormously large. When I mentioned the formation of a neutron star, that implosion from being a white dwarf to a neutron star, which makes the core thousand times smaller because the white dwarf is the size of the Earth, roughly, which is about 10,000 kilometers, the radius of the Earth, to be precise, is 6,400 kilometers, we'll call it 10,000. So the white dwarf is roughly 10,000 kilometers in size. If that becomes 1,000 times smaller, then there is an enormous amount of energy that is released. If you take an object and you drop it on the floor, then it picks up speed, and then when it hits the floor, that energy we call that kinetic energy, it is energy of motion, is converted into friction, and that means heat. That energy is not lost. You don't see it, but it is turned into heat. And we would call that, with a nice word, gravitational potential energy. So if I drop something on the floor, an object like this pen, then this building will not go up in fire. But if you throw, you know what a marshmallow is? If you throw a marshmallow on a neutron star, then the energy that is released is comparable to the energy that was released in the atomic bomb that was used on Hiroshima. A marshmallow weighs 10 grams. And the reason why so much energy is released is because when the marshmallow reaches the neutron star, it has a speed all about half the speed of light. So there are enormous energies involved. When that happens, when the neutron star is formed, the 10,000 kilometer wide dwarf becomes a neutron star, the energy is so enormous that the star is called a supernova, radiates more energy in one second than our sun has radiated in 10 billion years. 
So it becomes enormously bright. In the year 1054, there was such a supernova explosion in our own galaxy at a distance of about 6,000 light years. And that star could be seen during the day, for two weeks, visible during the day. That bright, 6,000 light years away. So the making of a neutron star goes hand in hand with a supernova explosion. It's an incredible explosion. The most important questions of all of physics at this moment is what is dark energy and what is dark matter. When we look at the universe, we see gas, we see stars, we see galaxies, we see clusters of galaxies. When we see gas, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is visible light, could be radio emission, it could be infrared emission, it could be ultraviolet, it could be x-rays, but we can still tell that is gas and we can tell the temperature of all the energy in our universe. We know that only 4% we can see, that 96% we have no idea what it is about. 23% is, has the name of dark matter and 73% is dark energy. And whoever will discover what dark matter is made of, guaranteed Nobel Prize. Whoever will discover what dark energy is made of, guaranteed Nobel Prize. The embarrassing thing is that we look into the universe and we only know of 4% in what form 4% of the energy is. We have no idea in what form the other 96% is. So we're blind. We miss 96%. Suppose your salary was cut by 96%, you'd notice it, wouldn't you? That's at this moment, I think, one of the most important issues. And I, it, you can say it's astronomy, but of course that is physics. It all comes down ultimately to physics.